Let's go through how we detect a CSR vulnerability on a certain page. We're going to use download mobile application here, log in with admin uh, to have a uh, session. We want to log in because CSR only has meaning when there's a session or uh, a log an active login so that the forge request does actually something on behalf of a user. So we have to log in or at least have some meaningful sessions such as having added some items to our shopping cart or things like that. So let's go to the security, put it to low as you saw before. Okay. Um, let's find CSRF. Okay, we go to CSRF. It's asking to change your admin's password. So whatever we enter here, it would be the new password for the administrator. Let's enable Burp Suite, intercept the request that we sent. I'll use one, two, three, four, five, six as both passwords. Click change. And here you can see that there's a request. It's a get request going to uh, the DVWA. It has three parameters, the password new, the password conf, and uh, uh, the change, which is equal to change, which is probably the operation over there. So you see that it's a get request. It's not a post request and it's it's basically a url there are no tokens in here so if we if if the user visits, visits this url by any means through like an image tag or any other uh request by his browser while he's logged in his password would be changed and obviously if he's an administrative user and we use a certain password then we can use the new password to log in as him while he has no idea that he has changed his password we're going to send this to the repeater. It says password changed. Now, we want to find a request that uh, has no random or uh, guessable parts. If, if, there's, if this request is consistent and nothing in it changes, then this request is reliable and this page is vulnerable to CSRF and we can then use that request to for forge a request on behalf of the user. One of the things that might change is the referer header. As you can see, I've selected the referer. I uh, want to make sure that the referer is not enforced in the application because if it's enforced, then I'm not, I'm not able to do it over HTTP. And we also need to check that there are no random token-like values either in the cookie or in the parameter himself. So we just want to here make sure that the referrer is uh, not preventing anything from working. We're going to send the request again. You see that it works properly because it says password changed over there. When I render it and go down, you see that it says password changed. So uh, you see that the referrer was not enforced here this page is vulnerable to CSRF and we can do a CSRF attack over there. So that's, that's how we detect if something is vulnerable to CSRF or not. Now let's compare it to the mode where the vulnerability does not exist. We saw that this one was vulnerable to CSRF. There was no random or unique or token-like values in here and uh, it was reliable sending it again would change the password as i just tested over here now i want to go um increase the security of the down vulnerable application and show that in a token uh state it will not work impossible is the safest method get back to csrf and send the request again keep in mind that i did not um uh look at the source code of the page yet I'm just uh, looking at it. Because that had uh, current password, I'm going to change it to high so that the current password is not there. So, so just so that it's exactly the same page as before. I'm going to enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 again. Put the intercept on. Uh, click change. And you can see here that uh, 
there's a user token I'm gonna send this to repeater and there's a user token parameter added over here and there it seems to be a random token and if I uh, change that I'm just gonna cut that C out of it so that it's changed and if I if I submit this request now it shouldn't work turn off the intercept go here and it says CSRF token is incorrect so you see that that CSRF token is was enforced over there now I deleted it in the in the last example I'm gonna change it in this example so that you see again uh, let's just change it to one two three forward this I'll turn off the intercept it says again that CSRF token is incorrect so you see that this CSRF token is properly uh, enforced here now I'm gonna send it again without changing the token to show you that with a valid token it's just gonna work so you see that it does change the password when you don't do that. So the token is actually working properly and is preventing us from uh, uh, running that request properly. That's that's a CSRF or a C or a synchronizer token. Now, because an attacker that wants to do CSRF needs to know this token. Um, and this is a random, secure random token, an, an attacker cannot guess that or put it over there. So let's see where this token is coming from. I'm just going to click that CSRF, uh, hit forward, and I see in the response that there's a hidden input here. You can see there's a, there's a input type hidden that uh, has this token inside of it, and, and it will be sent automatically with our form whenever I submit this form. So. So there are actually three fields here, two password fields and a hidden CSRF token field, which will uh, send it as a hidden token for us. So that's how CSRF tokens usually get implemented, at least in the HTML side of things. In JavaScript, it's a little more complicated and requires uh, a server that creates tokens for us and the JavaScript was gonna use that. It has its own security implications and we'll get to that uh, later. So this is how the server understands that the user is coming to this page and using this page to change the password rather than sending a direct request somewhere. So and that's that's the CSRF token that prevents us from um, attacking. So this is a secure CSRF token. I'm gonna delete the refer here just to show that the site uh, is not sensitive to the refer header. Um, and just sent it the valid CSRF token to see if it still works or whether it needs the refer header. Let's forward this and see if that works. So it does not check the refer header, which is pretty straightforward. A lot of websites nowadays don't do that. It was it was more common uh, in the last decade of web security, but now most users just use the CSRF token. You can see that the user token gets changed in every request. Even when you submit a request, the new one goes there. If I change it and use the new one, it says password changed again. And uh, I can only use each token once. So if I just refresh that page, the, uh, the token will not work anymore.